Mr. Swagel, welcome. Good to have you with us. All right. Uh, let's make sure we have uh, Phil Swagel's uh, microphone open there for us. My question is, your prediction is that we seem to be maybe getting past the worst in inflation and that it will be decidedly moderated at about 2.3% for, for 2023. What makes you confident in that and what signs are you seeing that that may be happening? No, that's right. And that, that is what our forecast has, that it has the um, strong demand um, that, that's been powering inflation along with the supply constraints, that both of those are moderating. And we, we see that already in current law, that the, the fiscal uh, support that was enacted over the last couple of years of the pandemic is falling away sharply. So that will, um, you know, that, that will... Uh, work on the demand side, along with the Fed's monetary policy. And then we see the initial signs of the supply bur uh, burdens uh, waning. And some of this is, is already in the data. You see the, the queues at ports are, um, are diminishing. Um, we also see the labor, uh, it says the labor force coming back. There's about a million people still out of the labor force um, who we think uh, will, will come back over the next uh, year or two. And so I, it's that combination that we see as moderating. Inflation. I understand that, th that this survey was largely conducted uh, or wrapped up in sort of the March window. Um, so the question, obviously, is a lot has changed since March. We know more about the war in Ukraine and its effects. We know maybe a little bit more about China. Are you still comfortable with the numbers that you're presenting? Or if you had one or two to change, what would they be, if any? Uh, and so we did wrap up the, um, the projection uh, early in March. And as you said, the developments uh, since then have been the Ukraine war. We saw the beginning of it uh, in February, but the uh, impacts, on, impacts on, on food prices, on energy prices, and some on supply chains have been larger than we anticipated um, as the war has gone on. And then the same with China, that the lockdowns there look to be having effects um, uh, you know, those effects are, are important. They're probably not, um, not as big as, as we, we might have feared. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still pretty comfortable with our forecast. Okay. Inflation early in the year is going to be higher than we, when we had, but I, I think our story is basically okay. I wonder about the opposite effect, Phil. It's Kelly here, where inflation is actually mm -hmm. helping us deal with the debt, bring it down, and, you know, to put it bluntly, inflate it away. Um, how much of that effect are we seeing play out? Uh, no, it is an important effect, and um, we see that. We see that both in revenues. So revenues are very strong, and that's partly because the nominal wage base and, and nominal profits are both strong, and that feeds into strong revenues. And then nominal GDP is strong as well. I mean, there's a, still a pretty good recovery from the pandemic on the real side, but nominal GDP is elevated because inflation, and that makes the, the debt ratio um, less worrisome. I guess my point is this situation would look a lot worse if inflation goes back to normal. Um, it would look worse on the debt side. You know, the, the danger, and I'll, I'll say here, this, this is the risk, is on interest rates. And, of course, the, the Fed um, spoke earlier this morning with their minutes, um, and, and they will contract to remove monetary accommodation. The, the risk on the fiscal side is higher interest rates because that would feed in, uh, into interest payments over time, and in some sense, that's the risk that we face from inflation spilling over into higher interest rates. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.